morning everybody I just wanted to make sure that you understood exactly what goes into your outline I don't want you to overdo it a lot of the times when we do an outline we think we're writing the whole paper what I want from your outline is actually a lot more um, streamlined so I just want to go through and give you my expectations so the first thing is going to be the introduction right your introductory paragraph is going to include your hook some background and your thesis statement this is where you grab your reader's attention. You start with a hook. This is, think of this as the opening statement. As this is a position paper, you are telling the reader what to expect from your position, the opinion on the topic that you have researched and you are now defending. Then this means that you should acknowledge, right? This means you should acknowledge that there are two sides to the claim and represent some information from each. You are only as good as the best argument against you. When you are defending a position, you are only as good as the best argument against you. So you really do want to pick the opposition's best argument and knock that down. Okay? The hook, you guys know what a hook is. It catches the reader's attention. But uh, make sure you're referencing a larger concept, idea, or truism. Truism is one of those funky words that's become a colloquial sort of accepted thing that is a truism becomes something that is widely accepted as the truth right by our by a particular society the American society right uh, background let the reader know a little bit about the argument here um, the text and authors whose information you've utilized in forming your opinion now guys you guys have quite a few texts. You have three texts and there might be various opinions including in the, included in those that you hope to use in your in your essay for, in the defense of your position. You don't need to include every author but kind of like that thesis statement if you've got somebody that's outstanding a uh, group that is widely recognized you might want to include them in there otherwise you can reference um, the greater publications the New York Times or the uh, science journal or whatever it is that you're including. It's not absolutely necessary and in contrasting with the um, literary essay, a literary analysis, you must include the text title author. But um, with a research paper, not necessary um, because it, it could be too cumbersome. Not, and the readers don't necessarily want to read all that. They want to be interested in the topic so stick more to uh, topic right focus more on the argument okay all right this could be about two or three sentences depending on the, the the breadth of your article in your opinion your thesis statement is going to become your roadmap for your essay your thesis statement um, corrections will be back to you no later than 8 o'clock tonight. Everybody will have a thesis statement. Um, your body paragraph one. So body paragraph one, two, and three are basically all the same formula. Oh, quick note, my apologies. The only things I want you to write full sentences for are those which are highlighted in yellow. So please do write a hook. Hey, that might change. It's okay. But I still want you to write one. Background, I'm going to include information about, right? But it does not have to be a fully written out background, right? It will end up being two to three sentences in terms of what your background will look like. But I will include, that's all. I will include this, this, this. It can even be a bullet point. It is an outline. It is not a paper. Thesis statement, full thesis statement, please. Your body paragraph, um, please include your full topic sentence so that we know that you have a good um, backbone for the rest of this paragraph. Your summary and background, background will include. Now, this doesn't have to be a whole lot of um, information, and it is certainly does not have to be full sentences at this point. Same with the setup, right? You might say setup will include author and uh, author and publication explaining uh, child labor laws. You don't have to do all that though. You don't have to say what the child labor laws are. You don't have to introduce the person completely here. You just need to say that you will include that uh, information, okay? I do want your quotations. 
um, please put your full quotation and citation in because that is going to become really the focus of your body paragraphs. All right, the explanation is going to be what insight can be gained. What is the lens through which you want the reader to understand this, right? And ideas on, uh, on, ideas on explanation will include uh, the reason for which this is uh, a, a good idea, a bad idea, the reason for which this does not hold water, because then you're going right into your transition, okay? Now, there are different ways to do this, but I do want you to start with the opposition, because it's kind of like if you think of uh, volleyball, you lob the ball up and then you spike it, right? So the quotation and the information from all this first um, resource is going to be set it up and then you're going to transition and you're going to knock it down with your um, the information and the evidence that supports your position. Okay. Your transition word, just like in a literary analysis, you're going to use a transition word. However, you're most likely going to be using a contrasting transition mm -hmm. because, like I said, you're going to have your opposition information up here. And then you're going to go into the information that supports you in your position. So your transition word. Um, and again, just try to maybe you come up with a few transition words in here. Again, you don't have to write the whole sentence, see? Textual evidence set up, same as previous, but you're going to maybe include a little bit more ethos, uh, a little bit more um, support for the situation or the person or the law or whatever it is that you are about to cite. Evidence, contrasting evidence. Yo is more. This might be about how that goes. I don't know why that was cut off. Okay. Then you're going to please do that entire quotation just like the previous one. And again, this is going to sort of you can even reference the previous quotation in here. So your explanation will include why this position is more um, holds more water, why it's more ap accurate, why it's more effective for the American people, why it's a better moral choice, whatever that in whatever that explanation is going to include. And you want to, in your concluding sentence, you want to discuss, compare, contrast, confirm. You want to make sure that you pull it all together and that your opposition is as defeated in terms of this particular point as possible. And to that, if you want to just drop your thesis point from your thesis statement in each of your body paragraphs, that is fine. So for your body paragraphs, um, Body paragraph one, thesis point. You're literally, literally going to go to your thesis and take the first thesis point that you're proving. And in body paragraph two, pop that thesis point right up here so that as you're working on this, you're always going back to that idea, making sure that you've got that done. Body paragraph three, pop in that third thesis point. That way you know that you've got your formatting on point. I'm not going to go through all of the body paragraphs. They are literally lather, rinse, repeat. There's no difference among the body paragraphs. Um, in terms of structuring which um, thesis point you use where, you have to use the way that they go in order of the way that they're set up in the thesis. If you discover upon writing your outline that you want to change the order of your points. That is fine, but you must change them also in the thesis statement. I'm going to repeat that. If you discover in the course of writing your outline that your body paragraphs would work better in a different order, 
that is fine. But you must change that order also in your thesis statement to make sure your organization is very clear. Now on to our conclusion. At this point, you have engaged your reader with an interesting hook, you have stated your position on the subject, and you have supported your position with points that utilize evidence from your reading and study so that your reader finds you to be a credible and intelligent source on the subject. But you are not done. You must wrap up your essay, and by following this formula, you will leave your readers wanting more of your delicious words and inspiring thoughts. Please rephrase your thesis statement. Okay, make sure that it's not exactly a copy and paste, but that, just like in the literary analysis, you come to it with a new understanding. Um, the recap of the body paragraph one, wait, honestly, I mean, in the outline, you haven't written it yet. You, you're not really writing the entire body paragraph. So we're going to leave these blank for now. Then your concluding thought. This is an extension or and a return to the hook. When I say extension, it doesn't mean new idea. It just means what's the overall impact? Why is this important? How has this become something that we now understand in a new way? All right. Some major things that I want you to make sure is that you are proving your point. You are not reporting back on other people's analysis. You are using your research to prove your position. Right? Okay. This is all ready for you to go, and you should be able to have access to this. I'm going to make this uh, a link for you to follow in our directions, and if you have any questions at any point in time over the course of the next few days writing your outline, please reach out via email. I will be sure to check it regularly throughout the day. And I hope that you guys have a little bit of fun with this. It should be a topic that you're interested in. Have a great weekend, guys. Take care.